Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. I'm Aaron, your host and programmer for today. Um, moving ahead on the SHA-256 hash calculator here. So the last session we did these first two sections of the computation, first two um, parts of it here. So next we've got to go on and do parts three and four. Um, I'm going to copy this bit of the notes here. We'll just put it right there. This darn. This assembly language mode likes to try to help you out with the comments, which is aggravating. Get this put in here and then we'll get started. Okay, so we did prep WW, that's step one. Um, and then we did init A through H, that's step two. And so we're going to start on step three. Um, and that's all the stuff that's going to be right here. So start we'll start a new zone here let's call it comp step three because um, this one doesn't really have a name it's just a loop where a bunch of things get calculated so and we know it'll need to end with a return and we need to close the zone all right so there's our there's our code to start with, or our section to start with. Um, now before we dive into that, one thing I want to do is clean this up up here. We had a bunch of stuff up here that was just here for testing, and since that's done, um, what I want to do is put in, just for now for testing these things, because we're not, we're not pulling in a real file yet. That'll come a little later. Um, so for testing these things, I've been putting in a bunch of numbers in, um, in a memory location and to save me having to do that manual every time, let's put it right in here. Um, insert a block of 0 to 255 at 2000. Okay. Um, and so to do that, let's load x with 0. Um, start a loop. Store x. Or let's see, we need to load Um, let's use y as the index. Let's use, is that right? Now yeah, let's do it this way. Um, let's just use x. In the loop, we will transfer x to a and then store a into. 2000 comma x and then increment x range if not equal back up to there and that'll be our loop so that should take let's see it'll store 0 into 2000 comma 0 then it'll increment x come back up here copy that into a and store 1 into 2000 comma 1 yeah so that will that'll set up that block of 2000 and so that these things have something to work on. All right. So we're going to work on this loop right here. So we have a loop that's going to go 64 times from 0 to 63. And I think for our index for the loop, we'll just use WW index because we used it down here for prep WW. And so we're not going to use it again until come come back around to prep WW. So it's available. Um, so we'll use that. So we'll put zero in it. Um, and so then at the end of all this stuff, we need to load A from WW index compare to 64, which is 40 in hex, and then branch if not equal back up to start 
and we'll we'll use dot start so that that's a local label, and that'll be right here. Oops. All right. So that's the general. That that's our loop. We're going to loop 64 times from 0 to 63. And now within our loop, we have to do these five things. So the first one is running a couple of functions on some things. Um, now these functions are a lot more straightforward than the ones we had to write in the last couple of videos. Um, because they always work on the same thing. They always work on a particular memory location. So these are fairly simple. We have F2 and F1, F, FCH, FMAJ. Um, they're pretty straightforward and they put their results in a particular location. Now we might want to change that location as we get into this. Um, and then the other thing we do is copy these two. Um, there's a constant value that we'll copy out of the constants table and then we'll also copy um, a piece of the message schedule. Um, so we'll see how to do that when we get there. Um, Alright, so let's get started on making T1. We want to... let's do these functions first. I think that'll be the simplest way to do the functions first and then we'll start adding things together. So first thing we want to do is jump to subroutine F2. That'll do that and it'll put its result into um, there no, I'm looking for it. What am I looking for? There we go. Um, oh no it's not there. It's over. It's in this one. Yeah, F2 puts its result into F2 res. So we don't have to we don't supply it with any arguments because it already knows where to get its argument and it just puts its result in F2 res. Um, so come back here. We call F2 and then we also want to call FCH. All right. So now we have five things we want to add together. We want to add together H, which is a, which is already a value in zero page. Um, F2 res, um, FCH res, and then a constant and a and a chunk of the message schedule. So let's look at our F add routine or the documentation for it. F add adds two values. They both have to be in zero page and we pass the zero page address of the first one in X and the second one in A and then the result is left where X was pointing to. All right. Let's just copy that over here so I don't forget. All right. So right now we have five values we want to add up, and they're all in different locations. The first three are in zero page already. The last two are not, and so we've got to you know we're gonna have to copy some things into zero page. But basically, um, I would say. Yeah, let's go ahead, let's copy constant T into temp1. That's where we've been doing most of our adding and stuff is in temp1, temp2, and temp3, which by the way are not the same thing as T1 and T2. Those are specific names that they gave in the spec. Temp1, temp2, and temp3 are ones we created. Um, so constant T we can copy that to temp1 and it is at let's see where is it at SHA 256 constants jumping around too much here okay it's going to be down here at constants so if T is and so that's a 256 byte block of numbers and in their terms in the terms of the spec they're thinking in 32-bit values and so they're going from t to t0 to 63 we've got to multiply t by 4 because we're dealing in bytes we have an 8-bit you know 8-bit system here and so let's see 
In fact, yeah, that means our index is not going to be from 0 to 63. Our index will be from 0 to 253. Um, and then when it rolls around to, when it rolls around to um, 0 again, that's when we'll stop. So our, our t here is actually going to be advancing by 4. And so down here, we don't need to compare to that. We just need to Actually, at the very end, we're going to increment WW index four times, and then the last time it'll it won't branch. Okay, we'll come back to that at the end. Um, all right. So what we need to do here is copy from constants, comma, and then WW index to temp temp one. Um, okay, so can one of our copy functions that we already have do that? Um, If copy mz can do that if we put the destination or if we put the source into copy source, but then we've got to move. I don't like that idea too much. Um, we made these functions for copying specific locations. We could just make another one of those. That's basically what we're going to have to do is just make another one like this. So this will be, we'll call it WWK for copying the constant, and whoops, that's not the one I want. That's the one that goes back the other direction. Let's use, let's use WWA. Okay. Copy four bytes from constants, comma X. To zero page. That's fine. Um, actually, we don't even need to save. We don't even need to pass the destination address. Let's just always pass it. Let's just always copy it to temp one because this is the only time we have to do this. Um, There's our index, getting it from WW index still, that's fine. We don't need to save the destination. Load from constants. Store it into temp1, comma x. Uh, t -t 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 -t. I think that should be what we need. Okay, so copy WWK. That's going to copy K. That's going to copy our constant to temp1. All right. Now we can start adding the other things to temp1. So remember the first. The first value to add is an x, so that's where we'll put temp1, load x with the location of temp1, load a with the other, the other value, which in this case we'll use f2res, and then jump to fadd, add, let's see, add f2res to to the constant, um, which is going to put the result, let's do it this, let's write it this way, temp1 equals f2res plus the constant, alright, now we want to copy or we want to add 
FCH res to that. So we'll load X with temp one again. Load A with FCH res and add again. So now temp one is F2 res plus the constant plus FCH res. Okay. Now we've got we want to add H to it. <clears throat> so that's is it H V or V H? Um, v H. Okay, I put a V in front of all these just to say value H to keep them separate from some other things. So we'll add H to it. So now it's added, now we've added H. Now the last thing is just to add the the value from the message schedule to it. Um, so do I already have a function for that? Let's see. Do we have a function that copies from the beginning of the message schedule or all these? These are all these are all offset just a bit. So let's make one more that's not offset. And we'll call it WWM. And it's gonna copy from or wait a second, is this Here, yeah, this is the message schedule after it's already been worked on, so that's in at C hundred. Okay, so this will be just like the others, except that it starts at C hundred instead of starting at an offset before C hundred. Um, wait a second. Oh, yeah, that's the right one. Okay, M M. Do have to pass the destination address, so pass the destination temp one in A. Or no, we want to copy into temp two. So we're going to copy that point of the, you know, that word out of the message schedule to temp2, and then we're going to add that to temp1. And so, destination temp1, other number, temp2, add, and so now we've added that to it also. So now temp1 should have all five added together. And that would be our T1 then. So we want to copy that then from temp1 to T1. Because it's got to get out of the way so we can do this other calculating. Um, T1. Oh, I guess we don't have a T1 yet. Um, Let's do this. Let's move these up 40, 44, and 48. T1. I don't want to get confused between these, these two, which are in the spec, and just our temporary variables. So we'll just have to keep that in mind that these are not. These, these two are from the spec, T1 and T2. Okay. And these are just our temporary storage for as we move things around because we don't have 32-bit registers that we can just save things like that in. So, um, okay. So T1 and T2. So we've got to copy this. Our, our result in temp one then 
we need to copy it to T1. Although, you know, we could have just been doing all this in T1 in the first place. What's how do, 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 could we do that? I believe we could. Let's change F copy WWK so that it copies the constant directly to T1. adds right on to T1 and we save copying it there later. That should work. Alright, so there we've done step one. Let's take this Copy it there. So we're going to loop 64 times, but we're going to step by four each time. That's what, what's going on there. Um, all right. And so that is right there. That's where we start and do that. That. Uh, that thing. Now we've got to do this thing. All right. So this one should be really simple. We jump subroutine F1 and jump subroutine F madge. Those both save their results in their own special places. And then we're going to want to copy. Um, let's see here. And they're both saved into zero page. So, um, we could change F1. Let's change F1 so that it saves its result already into T2. That saves us a copy. So, let's go down to F1. Puts result into T2. We're copying it twice, once to F once to um, F1 res and then again to wherever we're gonna work on it. So let's just have it cut or once to F once to F1 res and then again to T2. So let's just have it saved directly in T2. In fact that's funny, I, right here I said that already. Did I just change that? I don't think I did. That might have been what I intended in the beginning and I just forgot about it. Um okay, so this puts F1 result in T2, and now we did this, and now we just want to add that to T2. So load X with T2, load A with F madres, and F add them. That should make T2 equal F1 res plus F mad res, even though we're not using F, we're not going through F1 res anymore, it's still the same, the same idea. So that's that step. All right. Now we've got this step, which is just a copy. So we need to copy A through G to B through H. So here we're talking about these these values right here. Basically we're shifting them all up by one word. So VA will shift up to VB, VB shifts up to VC, and so on. Um, the trick here is you're, you're copying a bunch of things so 
let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So you've got, a, you've got a series of numbers, and you want to shift them all up four bytes so that they're like this. The problem is you can't start from the bottom because if you start with this one, you start with this zero, and you shift it up here, you, you wipe out the four before you get a chance to copy the four to up here. So to, you, you're, you're copying a section to a location that overlaps where it starts out. So when you're doing that, if you're going up, you've got to start at the top end and come down. If you're going down, you've got to start at the bottom end and come up. We're going up, so we just have to make sure our copy starts at the top end and comes down. And I believe it does. I believe our copy routine already does that. But let's see. We need F copy ZZ because we're copying within zero page. And yes, it starts with the index, the number of bytes, and 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 decrements it so it starts at the top and comes down. So let's copy the documentation for that. We're going to copy a series of bytes within zero page. So we're going to load Y with the address of the source, which is VA. Load A with the address of the destination, which is VB, because we want to copy it as a block from VA up to VB and load X with the number of bytes, which is 32, because there's eight words, four bytes each, so that's 32. So that's 20 in hex. And then jump to F copy ZZ. So that should copy our 32 bytes up a, up a step, you know, up a word um, to where they need to be. All right, this is going faster than I expected. I didn't, didn't think the first two steps would be quite this easy, but um, all right, now we just need to add T1 to E, which in our case is, is V, that's what I called it. So again, we're adding, so we load the, the, the location we want to end up, we want it to end up in is VE. The other number is an A and F add. All right, I should do that. And the last thing then is add T1 and T2 together, and that becomes A. So we can copy T1 to A. Um, let's see copying within zero page again, so load our source, load Y with the source, that's T1, load A with the destination, that's VA, load X with the number of bytes, that's 4, and jump to F copy ZZ, and now we need to add T2 to that, so load X with the, lo with the destination, VA, load A with the other number, T2, and jump to subroutine F add. All right, that should be that step. So that's our five steps. Then Then we increment the index four times to move up to the next word. And if it rolls around a zero, we're done. Otherwise, branch back up here and do that step again. Do, we'll do all these steps again. So I think that's it. I did not expect that to be that simple, so I may have them. I may have a mistake or three somewhere, but um, I, I started writing, or not even really writing, I, I got the, um, let's see here, I, I just went ahead and grabbed the whole um, SHA-256 implementation in Perl from Rosetta Code that somebody did there so that I could sort of insert some things in it and get it to print out sort of intermediate values as it runs um, so we can use that to test against some things but um, 
All right. Um, so let's see if this all assembles. We'll go to the terminal here. It assembles correctly. Go to the monitor and load it. All right, we've got 4D8 bytes. 4D8. <laughs> um, so we're getting close to. Sometimes I struggle with the hex off the top of my head, but um, we're over a thousand bytes. Of course, 256 of that is constants, um, so that doesn't really count. But um, anyway, let's see what happens if we. I guess the question is, what are we what are we expecting to happen by the end of this step? Um, By the time we've been through this step once, back over here, we've done the prep once, we've initialized once, we've done the, and the, we've, then we've done step three. So if we look back here, we've just done this step, and so if we break out of the program at that point, our Perl program, we can see where things are. Um, So that would be, I'm not going to explain this parole because that's not really what we're doing here, but um, right here they set up T1 and T2. Right here they copy, those, they copy the A through H up a step. Um, and then here they do a thing. So... Right there, we should be able to break out and see what things are. Um, let's see. T1. Um, we can check what T1 is, and we can check what the what the um, A through H values are. Should give us some idea whether we're whether we've got major problems. Um, what's going on there? Oh, that's right. That's just that's inside the loop. Um, <clears throat> let's do this. need to save them in something so we can print them out later. Okay. So that should give us an idea what our what things should look like. A through H here is what the hash values start out at, which is just provided by the spec, and then after these three steps through, they should be up to this. I believe that's right. <clears throat> yeah. Er, yeah, that's right. Um, So I might have to look back at the. I might have to look back at the um, spec for that, but I'll do that on my own time. Um, let's see. So let's just see what we have at eighteen. Yeah, those are our starting hash values. Um, 6A09. I recognize the first one at least. Um, okay. Let's 
So what do we expect to have? What did I say over here? 928, none of that stuff looks familiar. Okay, so A through H are still the same, is that correct? Is that what we expected? Right, let's, let's check to make sure this worked, inserting the block of 0225. Let's make sure that worked first of all. Um, yeah, that worked. Okay, so we filled, we filled up that block with values from 0 to 255. Okay, so that worked fine. Um, then we prepped and knitted and did this step. Okay. So question is, did this part work? Um, we broke out at 1314, so that's got to be right here. I don't, yeah, there's no, no break ahead of that. Um, so I would have thought I thought VA would have gotten changed here and not still be the original VA. Unless I'm unless I'm missing something. Um, let's look at the or let's see. Let's look at the constants. Yeah, 6A09, E667, that's the VA, and then BB67, so, BB67, okay, yeah, so those are still the same, those are still the original hash values, so why is that? I thought they would have gotten clobbered. any of this stuff run? Did I... Am I totally forgetting something here? Well, there's my... Th Wait a second. There's only two jumps there. Didn't I assemble this dang thing? There's only two jumps before my break. And there's three jumps right here before my break, so something isn't right. I didn't save something, or I didn't load something. Now there's three. Well, I could have sworn I loaded it. Well, that explains why they weren't getting changed, because the, the step three wasn't getting done. All right, let's try again. Took a little longer that time. Um, okay. All right. They got they got moved around. They got changed some. Um, don't know if they necessarily have the right values, but they did get worked on. Let's see here. How could we check to see if they're right? And this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to tinker with this on the side to get to get it to print out just the right things at the right time, so we can compare, um, set up some breakpoints, and then walk through it at the same time. But I don't want to I don't want to spend a lot of video time on that if it's not necessary. We'll um, we'll just keep going, and then we'll come back to this if we need it. So right now I don't you know could be working perfectly. I don't know. Um, we'll have to figure that out, but. Um, We'll be able to tell once we get some more steps done whether these steps are working. 
All right. So that was step three, which is this stuff right here. We called it comp step through comp step three. So go back to our org file. Step four then. Let's call that one done. Step four then is add A through H to their respective hashes. Now, pretty sure. Let's. I'm going to check the spec here just to be sure. Um, it's one of these. Here we go. Okay. Um, down here. So this is the stuff that I, this is all stuff that I copied. Let me um, shrink this. We're not really using this right now. This is all stuff that I copied kind of into English for our notes. Um, step one was preparing the message schedule. And then step, or well, that, that's in the preps, that's in prep WW. We did all that stuff. Um, or no, wait a second. Come back, come back. Yeah, okay, so that was step one, prep WW. Come back here. Let's see. Da, 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 da. So that was step one, prep the message schedule. This was step two, init A through H. Um, we just did step three, which is all this business. And now we have to do step four. Okay, so now we're, we're adding each hash value to its hash value. Okay. So, can we clobber A through H as we do this? Is that going to be okay? Yeah, it would be because they get initialized anyway. Right here. Um, I'm just thinking... So these values, the, the H's, the hash values are not in zero page. They're in... Um, they're at the end of our program. So we do our, all our adding in zero page. So what we could do is like say we copy the first one to temp2 or temp1, whatever, add it to A and then copy it back to there. I'm just thinking if that's a good use of, you know, if that's a good use of um, time or not. You know, if that's, in, if that's a lot of extra copying around. Well, the other option would be to just create our own little routine that just adds these 32 bytes, but it can't carry every time. It can only carry within a word. We can't. We got to make sure we don't carry from one to the next. Um, hmm. We also have the usual problem of. Well, that wouldn't be a problem in this case. I was going to say we we have different can't use the same indexing in zero page as you can in main memory in some cases, but we could here. Um, all right. 
I didn't expect this. I, I thought this part would be about the easiest part. It's a little little trickier than I thought, but um, we'll call this. What do they call it? Or what? Do they call it update hashes. Zone update hashes. And this is going to add V8 to VH to hashes. All right. So the way we'll do this, we've got to we've got to do 32 bytes, but This will be interesting. We'll load Y with 4. No. No. We'll load X with is going to be our index inside X so that we work on each each word as a set of four bytes. Um, I think this will work. Just kind of think it through here. So then each time we add two of them, what we'll do is we'll load A from hashes. Is that what we call it? Hash values, okay, so we'll load A from hash values, comma x. It would have to be hash values minus 1, comma x because we're starting at 32 and we're really going from byte 0 to byte 31. Um, and then we'll, let's see, clear the carry. Now let's. Clear the carry, load A with hash values, add with carry, VA minus 1 comma X. That'll work because that's in zero page. I'm pretty sure that'll work. Um, if it doesn't, we'll change everything. Um, Store it back into hash values minus one comma x. All right. Okay, here's a different. Here's here's a better way to do this, I think. Um, okay, so we cleared the carry at the beginning. Then we'll st we'll start a loop here. We're gonna load a. Add it with carry, store it back. Decrement x branch if not equal back up to the loop, and return. All right. There's just one issue. We want to make sure we don't carry from one word to the next. So, what that means is if x if 
x is divisible by 4, we don't want to care. We, we want to clear the carry. That's what, it, that's what it boils down to. We want to clear the carry every time x is divisible by 4. Whether, whether the carry is set or not, we don't care. We just want to clear it so that it doesn't get carried to the next word. So we can do that. We can check whether x is divisible by 4 by transferring x to a. Um, anding a with um, binary value one 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 zero zero, which masks everything above four. So If it's divisible by 4, then it's going to be 0. Or no, wait a second. Hold on, hold on. I got that backwards. Got it backwards. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. All right, that's going to clear the top six bits. So only 1 through 3, you know, only, if it, only if it's, basically, if it's divisible by 4, it's going to be cleared. It's going to be 0. If it's not divisible by 4, there will still be one, one or both of these two bits will still be set. So, we can branch, if not equal, ahead, but if it is equal, we'll clear the carry. I believe that's right. I believe that will work. Um, so the first time through, in other words, or let's see, no, I think it's going to be, it's going to be off by one, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's going to be off by one because the very first time through it's going to be divisible by four. It's going to, that's going to clear. So we need to deck, well, here's a, here, let's do it this way. Make that 31. Yeah, come on. Decrement x here, and then compare x to 0. All right. Or, well, hold on a second. Ah. Now, we want it to work when x is 0. We want it to happen when x is 0. We want it to compare to ff. And then branch if not equal back up here. All right, let me think. It. Think this through now. So the first time this is going to be 31. All right, the last byte of the of the block. I'm going to clear the carry. Load a from hash values, comma 31. Get this to the last byte. Add add to that the 30 31st byte from va, which will be the last byte of va, vh. Store that back into hash values. Then transfer x to a so we can check it, so we can check our index. If it's not equal, which it will not be, we come back up, or if it's not equal, which it will not be, we branch ahead to here, decrement x, compare it, branch if not equal back up to here, and then do it again with x equal to 30, do it again with x equal to 29, and then when x gets 28, that's when this will be equal to zero and the carry will get cleared again. All right, I think that seems reasonable. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to make up a little bit of a test suite to do this, to work on this. I don't know whether to do that. I guess I'll do that in uh, some side time rather than doing it on the stream here. Um, So update hashes then. We'll update the hashes. So we can at least check and see whether that updates the hashes. Um, so let's assemble again. Uh oh, got a problem. Subzone update hashes. We have garbage data. Illegal combination. Oh, that's the thing I said. I wonder if that'll work. Maybe we can't do an add with carry indexed. 
line 33. No. Let's complain about this line. What's wrong with this line? Or is this or is it actually this line carrying over to this line? Hmm. Thirty-one, thirty-two, and thirty-three. Garbage data at end of statement. So it's saying starting here, there's garbage data. What's wrong with my? What am I? What am I? Oh, I can't. <laughs> I swear, I always. I always make that mistake at least once every session, getting in immediate addressing and regular addressing mixed up, I swear. It's every time, once, every time. So anyway, I was using immediate, and that's the, I needed the actual addresses, not, not the addresses of the addresses. Okay. So our hashes are going to be... I don't know where exactly. Um, it looks like 16FC. C. There's where our hashes are, so after we run this, they should be changed. And they are. So that's all we know so far. It is doing it, we just don't know whether it's doing it all correctly, but we have our four steps now. We're getting close to having all the steps done so that we can then see if our, you know, see if we get the right output. And then once we know, once we see that whether we've got the right output, you know, then if it's not, we can start tracking down why. But um, that has that. And so now the next step for next time We've got our computation step done. We just need to wrap, or we, well, we've got our four steps of the computation done. We've got that done. And so now what we have to do is wrap that in a loop that does it through each 512-bit block. And really, to be able to do that, we have to go back up here and do the pre-processing part where we pad the message. We've got to, we've got to be able to pad the message, which is described right here is, describes how you do that. We've got to have our message padded so we know how many blocks there are. We've got, to, we've got to have that prepared first. So next time we'll have to do the message padding. We'll have to, well, we'll have to set up how to load in a file, how to do the message padding. Um, I was thinking about different ways to handle the whole question of loading in the file. The, the simplest way is just to load the whole file into memory using the, the kernel's routine for loading a file, um, which will allow us to do if we load it into block one, we can do a file up to like, I don't know, 58, 60K, something like that, which is bigger than anything we're going to find on a, on a Commodore disk, um, with maybe one or two exceptions. But another thing I thought about that might be kind of cool would be to make this, make it, make it possible for this to do the hash of a disk. To say, take a disk, track by track, sector by sector, make you know, come up with the SHA hash for the whole disk. That'd be kind of cool. Um, so that's a possibility. But um, I think we'll start with a file first just to keep things simple. But we have to do the message padding thing where we load in the file, pad it out to 512-bit blocks um, with the length at the end and this one bit here. It's not a big deal. It's just something that's got to be done. So we'll do the message padding. Then we'll be able to wrap our computation steps in this in the loop that does does that block by block and then we'll basically be ready to see if it all works um, once that's done you just print out the hashes um, so it's been at this for a few hours now but uh, we're almost there so um, that's it for this time I hope this was interesting and I uh, thank you for watching